cats, cats, cats. Mm -hmm. If you're here, you love cats. Who doesn't? Cats are iconic. They're some of the most beloved species on the planet. And I'm not just talking about domestic cats. We're talking lions, tigers, leopards, sand cats, rusty spotted cats. Everybody loves cats. They're symbols of strength, resilience, royalty, beauty, etc. And they are also very cute, very fun to have in your homes, domestic cats specifically. They've shaped our society in unimaginable ways. But more importantly, they have shaped our planet significantly over the last 20 million years. And so, this is the first episode of a new series, bitch. The history of cats that we know of. We're gonna explore the entire cat lineage, from the ancestors of saber-toothed cats, to lost lineages, all the way to some tiny cats alive today that you might have never heard of, that I already spoiled. I already spoiled one of them. But we're doing it all. And today we're gonna start with some of their humble beginnings, their ancient roots. So, without further ado, my name is Lindsay Nicole, and this is the history of cats that we know of. I'm so excited for this series, and I hope you are too. I don't know if you noticed, this is a slightly new setup. I've moved things to a different wall. I heard your complaints, I heard your requests, the base is back. I'll talk about the new setup at the end of the video, in case you're interested. No, I'm gonna talk about it now. This is still a work in progress. You might have not even noticed that it's a new setup, because I tried to make it look as similar as possible to the last one. I don't like change. I like sticking to things when they work for me. I'm already using a different mic and that was enough for me. Got this little magnetic mic right here and it's cool. You know what? I like it so far and it does make more sense. My editor was right. Anyway, this is a work in progress. It's a little bit different. You might remember I had some air plants and little things right here. I didn't really like them very much. Thought they were too small. So I'm trying to figure out what to do. Also, this setup is in a room now where I can't really have living plants because it's gonna be dark most of the time. So this is unfortunately fake. The real plant is in another room thriving. So I was thinking maybe I I could do some, you know those, wait, I have them. I can show you an example. I was thinking of throwing some of these up there. I know that usually it looks like shit. I kind of want to just have them like maybe hanging down right here to like fill in the gaps and make it more green because I also heard you want more green. I agree, valid. So I'm thinking this, let's see. I think I can make it look cool, but maybe you hate that and let me know because I do care about your opinion. I want you to like the setup. I was also thinking maybe just some like larger wall hanging fake plants. One right here, one right here, but. I don't know, let me know. And now onto the actual fucking video. We're gonna get the global conditions out of the way. If you watch my History of Life on Earth series, you already know what the fuck is going on, kind of. For this series, global conditions is gonna include general climate shit, of course, but also what was going on in the environment overall surrounding the species in question, the kitties. So it'll kind of be like an ultra condensed history of life episode. Like, boom, here's the plants and animals that were in the environment these cats were cooking up in. Today, our attention is on Eurasia and North America, sometime during the Eocene to Oligocene epochs. So like 35 to 25 million years ago. The world was in the middle of a cooling trend but it was still relatively warm. Does that make sense? It was hot, but it was even hotter before. So the world was technically cooling, but it was hot nonetheless. That's important because that impacts evolution. Shit gets warmer, things adapt to the warm or get booted. Shit gets colder, things adapt to the cold or get booted. Oh wait, another thing I want to mention about the setup. I lowered this because I could, because there was a lot of empty space down here. Unnecessary. Made me look a lot shorter than I am. So I'm not that short. Anyway, grasslands were slowly replacing forests that once stretched almost pole to pole. And with those expanding grasslands, came the expansion of grazing animals. Let me introduce you to some of the more unusual. The protoceratids, which look like your typical deer or antelope, but with a big ass rostral bone sticking out of their snout. They were found throughout North America and came in a variety of facial decorations, most likely to impress the ladies since it seems like only the males have them, and also probably to defend themselves, because why the fuck would you not? There were also calicotheres, which looked like something out of a fever dream. To me, they kind of look like what okapis are on the way to becoming. You get that? I could see them evolving into some shit like this, or like, if you mixed an okapi with a gorilla. That's essentially a calicothere. They walked on their knuckles like a gorilla and reached up into tree branches for vegetation. So yeah, not grazers, but browsers, if that matters to you. Figured I'd make the distinction so no one got mad at me. Said I'd introduce you to some unusual grazers, only did one example before showing you other shit. That's just how we run shit here, because I do in fact make the rules. Set a couple more herbivores, because this became an herbivore list in general. Big ass rhinos, like my favorite. Paracera theory, found in Eurasia. They got to 24 feet long and were as tall as as a two-story building. This was also the time of some early gomphotheres, a group of elephant relatives that looked like caricatures of elephants. Exhibit A, platybellidum, known for their shovel-like mouth. What about animals other than herbivores? Perhaps an omnivore, perhaps the most heinous omnivore to ever exist, the entelodonts, also known as the hell pigs. They could get to six feet tall at the shoulder. Pigs, dude, six feet tall at the shoulder and were just grotesque. This is probably six feet. No, no, I'm five, I'm five, three and a half. That's too tall. Eh, is that six feet? Yeah, at the shoulder. Ooh, wait. I should actually see if this exactly measures six feet tall because 
then that would make for a great in-video measurement tool. I'll look into it. Many of the full-on terrestrial carnivores of the time, at least the ones talked about the most, are conveniently nestled into a group called carnivora. At this time in Earth's history, they were only starting to gain their footing, but would eventually evolve into some of the most iconic predators alive today. Your wolves, your bears, and of course, your cats. Actually worth mentioning hyena don't, a fucking terror that was alive in Eurasia and North America, also carnivorin, a little bit ahead of its time. But nevertheless, the carnivorans were only starting to gain their footing in general. So let me not get ahead of myself. Carnivorans also include your mongooses. Civets. During this time, that's what a lot of carnivorans looked like. But based on genetic evidence between 35 to 28 million years ago, some of these mong geese were on their way to becoming the first cats. The earliest confirmed fossils belong to a cat called Proalurus, which translates to, you guessed it, first cat. They were first found back in 1879 in France. French cat by French naturalist Henry Philholt. There's no way it's pronounced like that. I'm butchering it. I it, I have to be. Braylis was pretty small, 22 pounds. It was not like any of the cats you know and love today. They had shorter limbs, looked like a civet. They had more teeth than cats do today, which became more specialized over time. Today, cats have their premolars P3 and P4. They lost P1 and P2. Proalurus had all four, P1, P2, P3, P4. They also had a bony bump on the bottom of one of their ear bones, which cats don't have today, if you give a shit. But there were changes happening in the teeth that indicated this little guy was on the way to becoming the classic cat form. And I'm gonna be honest, I couldn't find those specific changes in any of the papers I read, except for one paper I translated from French. It said the premolars the cats don't have, but proalurus had, were reduced or even absent in some of the specimens. Hopefully that was translated correctly, wee oui, wee. Oui. There are also general anatomical changes that different sources mention that led this cat to be labeled as the first cat. Couple other things about proalurus, they had retracted claws to climb in the trees. Since their initial discovery in France, their fossils have been found in other parts of Europe, potentially Mongolia and North America, but these are not confirmed for now. There are these slight differences between all of them that could be considered like regional variation or could belong to a different cat species alive at the time, you know? This was the early stages of cats. Shit was muddy as fuck. When you're talking about the first anything of a lineage, it's muddy as fuck. It's very elusive in taxonomic placement, just like cats. Cats are elusive as fuck. So easy to lose track of. Have you ever lost your cat out of nowhere for an extended period of time? Happens to me all the time. Remember that place I lived at that was like 500 square feet that I gave you a tour of? When I first moved in, I lost Koya in a 500 square foot apartment. I looked everywhere, she was gone. And then I realized that the washer was running and I thought that somehow she would gotten into the washer and she was in the running washer with all my clothes. And I freaked out and then she just showed up somewhere. She wasn't in the washer, she just showed up somewhere. I don't know where she hit, and that's cats. That's cats for you. That's how they survived this long. That's evolution at work. Not only were these early cats elusive in taxonomic placement, they were also elusive in the fossil record in general. Right after Proalurus, there's a cat gap where cat fossils have not been found until an age of almost 10 million years later, at least for now. I'm gonna bet the cat gap is not permanent. Maybe in the future, we're gonna find some transitional fossils in the cat gap, but for now, we're jumping to the next stage of cat evolution, known by the name Pseudalurus. I'm gonna be honest, and I'm gonna explain this in a second, but Pseudalurus kind of feels like a concept. And I'll get to what I mean by that. But because of that, Proalurus is thought to have evolved into Pseudalurus, based on the very classic anatomical shifts you'd expect at this stage of evolution, shifting towards a more feline lifestyle. One of the notable changes in Pseudalurus was the total loss of P1, that first lower premolar. Remember I mentioned only some of the Proalurus individuals had lost their P1s. Most were reduced, as long as that French paper was translated correctly. All Pseudalurus species lost their P1s. There's a lot of species, by the way, possibly 11 that we know of. Four from Europe, two from Asia, and five from North America. The European species are the oldest, and I'm not gonna get into the others because it's all, like I said, muddy as fuck. Exactly how they evolved from Proalurus or from Pseudalurus. Actually, I'm gonna explain it now. Gonna get my whiteboard so I can make a little diagram. Fuck it. I gorilla taped my whiteboard to the wall. That's good, that's good. Ugh. Shut the fuck up. I just ripped a nail out of the wall. The problem with Pseudalurus is that it's a grade instead of a clade. You can think of a clade as like a plant. You know these two things evolved from this thing. That's a clade. They all make up a little tree. Pseudalurus is like, we know these things were here, but we don't know exactly how they evolved. We don't know if this one's the ancestor or if none of them are the ancestor. That's a grade. A clade is like a plan, while a grade is like concepts of a plant. There's 11 Pseudalurus species that we know of. Did the diversification happen at Proalurus or did it happen at some place down the line as Pseudalurus had already evolved? These diagrams are shit. These are not to be used in classroom. This is just a really shitty visual tool. Let me know if that makes sense. Back to the changes. P1 is out. 
Donzo. So Daler has also developed longer canines and had reduced premolar heights. This suggests more specialization. As you would probably not expect, Sudalerus was actually discovered before Proalus, way back in 1843, so 36 years before the discovery of its ancestor. And also from France, another French cat. But at the time, it's discovered. H.M. Ducrede de Blainville. What a, what a name. I'm once again definitely not pronouncing that right. Mistakenly thought the skull fragments he discovered belonged to a highly specialized saber-toothed cat. He named it Felis Quadrantata, but H.M. Dudecray de Blainville was wrong, and now the name is dumped in the trash. Because a few years later, a guy named Paul Gervais recognized the transitional nature of this fossil's teeth, the extra set of premolars, P2, and realized this was a transitional species between cats we know today and whatever they evolved from. Because, like I said, cats today only have P3 and P4, but Sudalerus had P2, P3, P4. So he named it Sudalerus, which translates to false cat. A sad name for such a monumental discovery, if you ask me. And then, later, Proilers was found with the P1 premolars intact, but kinda on their way out, boom, that's the first cat that we know. Since their initial discovery, Sudalers fossils have been found all throughout Eurasia and North America, and like I said, represent 11 species, some of which are a bit iffy. They came in a variety of sizes, from the size of a house cat to the largest, thought to get to about 60 pounds. Pretty impressive for a primitive cat. Overall, these cats had longer spines than Proailers, were more cursorial than arboreal, on the ground instead of the trees. Because more fossils have been found of them, we know a lot more about them than Proailers, which isn't saying much. Because like I said, this lineage is elusive as fuck. But we do have an idea of what Sudaler is branched into and in what directions. Two major branches specifically, the conical tooth cats, the modern cats we know and love today, and the saber tooth cats. It seems as though this split took place about 11 million years ago. One direction would lead to the iconic smile on my channel's logo, the saber tooth tiger that we all know and love from the Ice Age, and other famous species, Homotherium, Dinophilus. The other path would lead to our tigers, our lions, our domestic cats, our cheetahs, a total of 37 species alive on our planet today. And of course, other extinct ones. This is kind of the cliffhanger that we leave this video on. These are the next chapters. First, we're gonna be covering the saber-toothed cats, the macarodonts, our modern cats, how they evolved, the different groups that exist, because I'm not covering 37 species in one fucking video. Or maybe I am. Maybe I decided that. I doubt I decided that. But of course, cats are more than just their evolutionary history. There's also the ways the domestic cat became the domestic cat. That will be its own video. Probably touching on how significant cats have been in our societies, in societies thousands of years ago. We're gonna get into all of it. So I hope you're excited. I know this video was a little bit short, but as you can see, we still have a lot to learn about the cat's ancient roots that we literally just don't have fossil evidence of. It's elusive, it's on brand. So. I hope you're excited. I'm really excited about this series. And yeah, if you have any suggestions about the setup, if you like my leaf idea, let me know. I'm gonna be filming another video right after this. So the next video, you're not gonna see any changes made to this backdrop, just a warning. I'm also gonna be wearing the same outfit. I don't wanna change. So that's that. I hope you're excited. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode coming out probably in a month, maybe a little bit before. I have the notes ready to go. Check out live streams and behind the scenes content on my Patreon where you can also find our Discord server. And for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya.